Hey everybody, John Wagdon here with Dev Central, and we're coming to you with another Lightboard lesson video. And today we're going to talk about sensitive data exposure. This is one of the OWASP top 10 vulnerabilities. The new OWASP list was just released, the 2017 version. And this was number three on that list. So uh, it's a pretty significant vulnerability out there. Um, and so, uh, so we want to talk about it. So sensitive data exposure. Basically, the bottom line on this is where you have a web application, you have sensitive data that's stored as a part of that, and you allow that sensitive data to be exposed, um, which is something you don't want to do. We hear about this stuff in the news like all the time. You know, Company X just got hacked and everybody's credit card number is now, you know, available or social security numbers or, you know, whatever. So you see it all the time in the news. So let's not be that guy. Let's not be the one that allows the sensitive data to be exposed. Um, here's kind of the, uh, the bottom line or, or a very generic sort of uh, a description of it or a or a, a you know, scenario. If you have a user out here in the internet, you have a web application. Uh, so I'll put web app right here. User wants to access the web application. And maybe there are you know, several pages uh, you know, that this web application has that's you know, it's built. So you got example.com, example.com slash credit card number, example.com slash sensitive data information page or whatever. Um, so, you know, there's, so there's several pages that comprise this whole web application. Uh, you may also have a couple of databases that this thing utilizes. So I'll put database here, maybe a database here. And let's say this one is all of your, um, you know, username and uh, password, all that stuff. And then this one over here, of course, is your credit card numbers, you know, everybody's credit card number that you do business with. Of course, you store all that. Um, maybe you shouldn't store all that. Uh, but anyway, the, the, uh, the issue is the user comes in, they access your web application, and they want to buy something on your online marketplace, for example. Uh, they've authenticated via the username and password, of course, and you've stored their credit card number for them so that they don't have to mess around with looking at their credit card number on their actual credit card. They can just one-click purchase this thing. You've already got the credit card details stored for them. So super, super nice for them. All right. Well, um, the, of, of course, with all that niceness comes potential vulnerabilities. And so you have bad guys that want to come in and they want to expose all of these credit card numbers and all these usernames and passwords and all that stuff. Um, and they use different um, attacks to make that stuff happen. Um, and, and, you know, and, and then bad things happen. All right. A few different things that I wanted to point out as we look at the details of this is let's say that of all these different, uh, you know, pages that comprise your web application, some of them are use uh, encryption and some of them do not. So let's say that this one right here and this one right here both use uh, TLS encryption and this one is just straight you know HTTP with no encryption because this is just like a page with some pictures on it or something you know it's not a big deal. Um, so maybe not all your pages use that. Well as you develop these sometimes you may you may sneak in some some data onto a page that doesn't use encryption um, uh, but that data may be sensitive, so you need to be careful with that. Uh, also, even with the pages that do use TLS or SSL encryption, um, maybe they use weak ciphers. So I'll put weak ciphers right here. All right? And the problem with using weak ciphers is that they're weak, and uh, bad guys could come in and say, hey, I am going to use some different tools um, to forcibly downgrade this connection that the user would have with this page from TLS back down to just HTTP. So even though this is sensitive data on this page and you set it up with TLS encryption, the, the, the fact that you have weak ciphers could expose you to the vulnerability of saying, hey, I'm gonna, a bad guy could come in and force this down to just HTTP instead of HTTPS and then thereby get, uh, get the data that would be on that page. So, uh, so that's, a, that's a potential issue. Um, the uh, another another scenario might be that let's say you had some kind of a uh, like a file upload flaw uh, for all these uh, credit card numbers that were stored in a file somewhere, and the user or the bad guy was able to get in and grab that file and upload the file. And let's say you even encrypted it, um, you know, because you thought ahead, like, hey, this is sensitive data. But but if you didn't encrypt it very well, then they could use. Uh, uh, something like a rainbow table, which is a known list of, you know, password uh, crack that, uh, that they could run against that to try to crack the password for that encryption and then gain access to the sensitive data. 
Um, and then once they have the sensitive data, especially if it's like a social security number, then that, that type of data doesn't really change. I mean, you get, you get that assigned at birth and then that's yours for the rest of your life. Uh, credit card number is gonna change you know, at least every few years. Um, so anyway, so uh, a, a couple of things that you would need to do to guard against this sensitive data exposure, um, other than you, know, you need to build the web application properly, of course, you need, to, you need to encrypt all of the pages that need to be encrypted, maybe even encrypt all of them. Uh, you need to encrypt the sensitive data at rest that sits there as a part of your web application. But I'm just gonna list a few um, sort of uh, best practice or mitigations that, uh, that you might have. Uh, and the first one that I would say is classify your data. So classify data, all right? So we all know that um, not all of the data that you would necessarily work with is sensitive data. Again, you may have some like pictures that you have on one of your websites. That's not necessarily sensitive data. So classify the data. Some is sensitive, some is not. And then you need to apply controls. I'll put apply controls to that data. So if it's very sensitive, then you need to make sure it's very well you know, protected. If it's not sensitive at all, then maybe you don't have to worry as much about it. All right, another one, I just mentioned this a second ago, encrypt data at rest. So I'll put data at rest, okay? So the data at rest, again, that would qualify based on your data classification. Uh, that data, you need to make sure you encrypt it and you encrypt it well with some strong encryption. Uh, that way, if it's ever, you know, if, ever, if anyone ever gets that file or whatever it would be, then, then the data is encrypted. Um, <clears throat> the other thing you need to use is strong ciphers. And this gets back to the experience that the user has with your web application to begin with. Uh, this connection needs to be protected with TLS uh, encryption and you need to make sure you use strong ciphers as you build out that, that TLS uh, you know, connection with your end user. Um, again, if you use weak ciphers or if you have any weak cipher at all in your cipher list, then that exposes you potentially to some problems. So make sure you use strong ciphers on your uh, web server because the web server gets to determine what ciphers are used in that TLS connection. Uh, another one that I'll put is, um, I'll, I'll put uh, possible or maybe a consideration for, I'll put PFS, which is perfect forward secrecy. Um, and then I'll say uh, and or HSTS which is HTTP strict transport security. Um, perfect forward secrecy is, uh, deals with this TLS connection. We've got some other lightboards on that that we can link to, but basically it, uh, um, it, it doesn't, it, it's, a, it's a stronger form of communication using the TLS protocol between the user and the web server. Uh, and then the HSTS basically says, hey, if you wanna communicate with my web application, then you have to do it via HTTPS. It has to be an encrypted uh, communication. Um, there are some, uh, some little gotchas on that one. If uh, once you go HTT, H, HSTS, um, then you can't really go back. So, uh, you know, you, you can't put the toothpaste back in the tube, as it were, on that thing. So once you make that decision, which is a decision towards security, towards strength, you need to make sure you have everything uh, ready to go when you flip that switch. Um, or else you could black hole some things, you could break some things. So just be careful on that one if you want to go that route. I'm not saying don't use it, just be careful when you do. Um, all right, so again, sensitive data exposure. You have this sensitive data and you don't want to expose it. Another thing that I would say quickly is don't store sensitive data unless you absolutely have to store sensitive data. So if there's, a, if there's an absolute requirement where you have to sit there and store this data as part of your web application or a database that you control or whatever, then okay, but if it, if it is at all possible to you know, use the sensitive data and then delete it and get rid of it and uh, you know, throw it away um, you know, right after that moment that you needed it, then do that. So don't, don't hold on to this any longer than you absolutely have to. Uh, so anyway, because if the data is not there, then it can't be, you know, it can't be exposed. So that's kind of the, the idea behind that. All right, so again, this is the number three um, you know, vulnerability on the OWASP top 10 on this list that just came out, sensitive data exposure. So it's happening a lot. Again, all you have to do is watch the news these days and you see this kind of stuff happening. So do these things, build your web applications properly. Uh, there are some other things like you could put a, like a web application firewall in line that may help with this, um, you know, help, help uh, secure a lot of this 
uh, sensitive data exposure. Um, but nonetheless, be careful out there. Make sure you do things uh, properly, and, uh, and let's be safe on the Internet today. So thanks for watching this Lightboard lesson, and we'll see you guys out there in the community.